Right. You remembered. I, always, I know. I always forget to remember. Um, so thank you for joining us. We are excited for you to be here and ask questions. If you'd like to add questions to the chat, you're welcome to do that and we will read them um, either as the conference goes on or at the end. If you're not sure about the chat and you just want to um, ask a question, if you want to just hold your questions to the end, then we can um, unmute ourselves and do, um, do it that way. So I am going to go ahead and um, mute everyone, but you're welcome to keep your video on. And I'm gonna, um, so then our speakers, if you would unmute yourselves, that would be great. Okay, so that we can um, all see each other and see our smiling faces. And we are going to ask that everyone, of course, be respectful, this is a safe space. Um, and we are respectful of all of the people who have joined us today. We wanna start by thanking, in addition to all of you, the Pew Center for Arts and Heritage. They are the major supporters of this exhibition. Our colleagues at the Clay Studio who are um, ever supportive of all that we do. Josie Bockelman is going to be joining us. She's part of the team, but she was um, assisting one of our other employees this morning, so she needed some more time. We wanna thank the three artists who are our lead artists and two of them are here with us today, Kukuli Velarde and Ibrahim Saeed. Thank you for joining us. We wanna thank all of our community partners and that includes Tayer Puerto Ricano and I know we have Marilyn here. Hi Marilyn. And the old Kensington, I always get the, um, the last letters mixed up. Annie, it's the neighborhood association right and miss moss is here with us we are also working with the south kensington community partnership so thank you to all of you as we move forward we'll talk a little bit more about how each of those organizations are involved i'm gonna share my screen with you so that you can see what we're talking about here And the reason why we decided to have this, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek. The reason why we decided to have this program today is that those of you in South Kensington might be seeing this digging that is going on. So we have broken ground and we're really excited about that. Oops. So what is Making Place Matter and why did we decide to do this project as we are moving into our new building? This is an image of what the new building is going to look like in the fall of 2021. The reason that we started this important work um, about three years ago was because as we considered moving into the neighborhood of South Kensington, we wanted to be respectful, we wanted to meet the neighbors, we wanted to ask the neighbors to welcome us into the neighborhood rather than um, come in with without that respect, which is so important. So we realize and, and honor that there is a rich cultural heritage of the people who are already living in that neighborhood that has been built over many years. And we are excited to be part of it and to help in any way we can and to become part of the fabric of the neighborhood. Making Place Matter is an exhibition that's organized around the complex meanings of place in our contemporary social conversation. We are thinking of it as a really ambitious, totally new kind of exhibition that we haven't done before. It's going to combine community members as part of an exhibition council. It's going to combine that with these three amazing artists who have agreed to work with us. Um, the team of staff members that we have gathered, and a visitor engagement gallery, which is something we've never done before. At the Clay Studio, we do hands-on programming and art making really well. We, our education staff is so expert at going out into neighborhoods and all over the city and bringing wonderful hands-on programming to those areas and to our community in Old City, as it is now. 
Um, and we have nice exhibitions as the curator. Um, I can say that I think we have pretty nice exhibitions, but we've really never combined those two things. So if you might have experience going to an art museum where you get to see an exhibition and then immediately do an art making activity that responds and helps you kind of process and make meaning out of what you've seen, we are excited to engage that kind of programming. And the exhibition council that we will be gathering over the next few months, along with our community partners, are going to be the people who are the team that help us to plan those programs. So we're really excited um, to make that programming along with the neighbors in our new area to make it um, the most meaningful to everybody. So we wanted to build a resonant conversation between Clay, the artists, the lead artists, and the audiences in our new galleries. And we figured that this was the best way to do it. All of these, this multi-layered project that we have taken on. We feel like we are responsible to our existing community and to the local, national, and international art spheres as a place to experience the best of ceramic art. We feel like we've been doing that well, and we, what we want to do is continue and do it even better in the future. With this project, we have the opportunity to do that in a really thoughtful way. We are so grateful again to the Pew Center for Arts and Heritage, not only for funding this exhibition and this very robust program, but also they helped us by funding the work that we have done up to this point. So I'm gonna get in a moment to the two projects we did um, about two years ago that were our um, first kind of robust foray into working with our new neighbors. So as I said, we're asking to be welcomed by our neighborhood. We wanna create meaningful and a welcoming experience for this first exhibition when we first open our doors. And we wanna present these three, again, amazing artists who are making work at the highest level about cultural identity and how it relates to place. I thought you might all enjoy um, this very short video that's about our concept of moving. And so I'm going to stop this share really quickly and hop over to the video. I can find it. There we go. Can everybody see that? When I think about the Clay Studio, I think um, community and artist. There are so many numerous ways to interact with the Clay Studio. You have exchange students, you have international students. It incorporates a lot of other things that we didn't when we were just getting started. The resident artists, which is great. There's a school, there's a shop, a space for exhibitions. There is a claymobile that goes to inner city schools and introduces the children to working in clay. It's probably the only arts program they have in some of these schools. When I say pottery saved my life, I, I think more about the fact that it gave me an opportunity to do something other than what the world gave me in terms of opportunity. It gave me an opportunity to create my own path. Anytime you can take a moment in your life to slow down and experience something new, maybe that's a challenge for you. I think it sort of shuts our brains off to what's going on in the rest of the world. And you're sort of really in the moment. We realized that if the place we were wanting to grow, we would have to move out of the building we were in. And currently the building is sort of two buildings cobbled together in very various ways that are Make a lot of inefficiencies and there's a lot of hallways because we're building, you know, trying to force two buildings together. Again. For many years we've functioned out of these two row homes in, in Old City and now we're building a purpose-built building that is designed, you know, to be a studio, to be a gallery, to be a gift shop and set of time. South Kensington is already a, a burgeoning artist and maker community there and the neighborhood is very residential. The idea of being an urban center is that, like in the summer, they have a summer camp where the kids spend the day making play and doing activities that anybody can come here. So, being an urban place, you have mass transit nearby, lots of different kinds of people can make play. I think people are tremendously benefited by, um, you know, organizations that move into 
happens in neighborhoods and become uh, a real part of the social fabric of that community. And I can definitely see that happening with the Play Studio. I think there will be such a great opportunity to really deeply and authentically connect uh, with the, the neighborhood and the residents. It supports artists um, from the moment that they first touch play to the moment that they're still in the mid or late career stages of what they can do. And in Philadelphia, it's the place for taking classes, going to see some exhibitions. It's the place. You know, the place to was built from five people that were students all at Moore College and came together and needed to share studio space. And since then, it's really just sort of organically grown um, from this inward facing organization of artist needs to this outward facing organization of what is community need and how can we better serve that community. So, you know, the community built the Clay Studio over the years, and I think that's what it's going to take to build a new Clay Studio. All of us coming together um, as a community and donating and giving straight gifts and um, being a part of history. Okay. Thank you for working, listening to that with me. And now I'll go back to my project. So um, a big reason that we are here today is to introduce you to our team. We're really excited that we, again, with our funding partners were able to um, bring together all these amazing people. So um, in a, a moment or two, I'm going to um, turn it over to Elizabeth Esner and then to Ana Jimenez and Maria Albornoz. But first, I also want to make sure that I note that we are working um, closely and we have established community partnerships with Taller Puerto, Puerto Riqueño, South Kensington Community Partnerships, the North Square Community Alliance, and Old Kensington. And as I said, we have some of those representatives here on the call with us. Um, those organizations are doing really important work. They've existed in the neighborhood for many years, and um, we're just really excited to be able to join them in the important work that they're already doing. Um, and as I mentioned, Josie Backelman is not able to join us today, but she's an important member of the team as well. So um, the main exhibition goals, exploring the importance of place and cultural identity in ceramic art, creating a welcoming first exhibition for our new neighbors, asking for collaborators in the neighborhood and organizations there, and then building on previous projects, which I've mentioned a couple of times. And those previous projects were Clay and Conversations and Maker Days. Clay and Conversations was an opportunity to literally um, take pottery out onto the streets with Roberto Lugo. We set up pottery wheels around the neighborhood and he would just throw and people would come up and he would sort of do many throwing lessons with them. And that, that was one aspect of the project. And then we also, once we had introduced ourselves in that way, we asked people to sign up for other projects. Um, events where we would go, we had four really robustly attended events where Rob Lugo and Jenny Shanker, the two lead artists on that project, led conversations about the neighborhood while they were also leading people in a clay project. So this particular one was at Tayer Puerto Riqueño and it was while Rob Lugo's exhibition was up there and each, he threw all those bowls and then each of the participants had the opportunity to decorate the bowl however they wanted um, and while we were doing that, we were having a group conversation about people's hopes for the future for their neighborhood. So there is lots of evidence that shows that while you're making things, your brain kind of frees itself a bit. And we really did find that through that process, we were able to, to have um, meaningful conversations. And each one of those projects, talked about a different thing. Your hopes for the future for the neighborhood, your memories of the neighborhood, your concerns about what was happening in the neighborhood. And through that, we were able to hear from the neighbors directly ways that the Clay Studio might be able to help and be um, of service as we arrive um, as neighbors ourselves. 
And the other one was Maker Days, and that was funded by the William Penn Foundation. And our amazing education staff went to something like 50 public events that summer. They had plate making through these molds. And then once the plates were made, people were able to put decals um, with images and words to represent their identity. And each person who decorated a plate, their name was placed on the back. And at the end of the summer, we had this amazing dinner where over 500 people came and found their particular plate because our employees are so amazing and put codes on the backs. So people came, they were able to take the plate that they had made during a public event and then have dinner um, in a group setting all together to celebrate that we would be coming to the neighborhood soon. So um, I am going to stop talking for a few minutes and ask Elizabeth Esner to take on the role of host and share her screen. So Elizabeth, yeah. thank you so much. All right, thanks Jennifer. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen um, and introduce myself. I, as Jennifer mentioned, am consulting curator on Making Place Matter, working with this truly excellent team. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna be really focused on working with the artists, two of which are here today, so hello. Um, I'll also be working uh, on a publication and symposium around this project. And our aim in these things is not just to capture the sort of final outcomes, the exhibition, but really this 360 degree process of participation that will bring this into being. So over the next year, as Making Place Matter develops, we're gonna be hearing directly from each of these artists. But today I thought I would just share a brief primer on their work. Um, and I also wanted to introduce myself a little bit. I am an independent curator and writer, and I'm currently a researcher for a forthcoming book on the ceramics collection of Robert Ellison, which looks at abstraction in ceramic form from George Orr up to today. Um, I've curated a number of exhibitions, but I wanted to briefly share this project that you're looking at on the screen. Um, it was called Graffiti and Ornament. I organized it last year at the Woodlands Estate in West Philadelphia for past present projects. So this was a site responsive exhibition, which meant that there was no work when we began. Uh, we began with an 18th century neoclassical mansion, a surrounding 19th century cemetery, and a little piece of carved 19th century graffiti on the site, which really served as a point of departure for two artists whose work incorporated graffiti and hip hop culture. Of course, Roberto Lugo will be familiar to all of you. We just saw him in the video. He's a great friend to the Clay Studio. And we also worked with Leo Tokoski, a glass artist. And these artists made all of the work for this exhibition. And because of the responsive nature of this project, what really began as kind of a formal connection through graffiti eventually became very much a meditation on history, confronting whose lives are remembered and whose lives are left to be forgotten. And of course, you can see that here in this uh, work by Roberto Lugo, his own self-portrait on the right, facing what was a human scale pot uh, depicting Michael Brown in his high school graduation photo. And the title is, Do You Know How Hard It Is to Get a Black Man Through High School? And this was a quote from Brown's mother. And of course, in this moment, uh, the themes of Lugo's work are thrown into even starker relief. But this exhibition really began with both artists bringing their own cultural heritage, their own personal histories, their own artistic practices into dialogue with this place and its history. And so of course, Dialogue around place is central to making place matter. And as Jennifer just walked us through, there are so many important voices to center in this project. And so for me, uh, although it may seem counterintuitive, I am most excited to listen, to really actively listen and really openly learn from these artists, from our community partners, from our exhibition council, and from our audiences, especially through the visitor engagement gallery. So the artists are Kikuli Velardi, Ibrahim Saeed, and Molly Hatch, whose work you see here, and each use clay to reinterpret historical objects tied to the sites of their cultural heritage. As you can see, these artists approach clay in very different ways, um, and each of them uses 
each of them has a cultural background that in some way mirrors many of the cultural backgrounds of the community of South Kensington that we are entering into. Uh, we hope that this will prompt our audience to consider the places that inform their own identities, really using these works as an entry point. And that's actually a perfect place ah, to begin with Kukuli Velarde's work. Hello. Um, it's really renowned. And here she is photographed in front of some of her work that was in her most recent show in 2019 of paintings. It was called The Complicit Eye. It was at Taiying. And um, of course, they are one of our community partners for this project, also based in South Kensington. So Velarde was born in Peru. She came here at the age of 22 to study at Hunter College. She's lived in the US for 30 years, making her home in Kensington. So Kakuli is really an ambassador in two contexts. She's an artist, but also a member of the community. Um, her native Peru is central to the world she creates in her work. She very directly confronts the consequences of colonialization in Latin America, and she does this using pre-colonial ceramics and her own personal history as sources. And if you look across these two images, you can see the physical resemblance between the artist and her sculpture. She often uses her own image as a way to reference her indigenous ancestry. This piece on the right is from an ongoing series for Velarde called Plunder Me Baby. And she imagines these fantastical conceptions of pre-Columbian ceramics have woken up in the present day and find themselves in these museum settings. And you can see the range of emotions, confusion, anger, shock, defiance against the oppression, which is also reflected in her titles. Um, she often begins with a sort of um, insult in both Cuenca and English, along with the historical sources of their inspiration. In the case of the plundered work on the right, Mixteca, Mexico, from about 1250 AD. Um, Kukuli has spoken really eloquently uh, about art's role as a tool for change, for social justice, and really an antidote to Western sort of universalist thinking. Um, she has often said that her work really honors plurality, and she does this by representing and examining her own cultural inheritance. So next we'll talk about the work of Ibrahim Said. And these are just some of his many jaw-droppingly intricate carved sculptures that draw from traditions in Islamic art and architecture. And for those of you that may have tuned in to Ibrahim's illuminating studio visit with Jennifer a few months ago on another Lunch and Learn, this work will be familiar. And Jennifer, I believe these are archived on the website, is that right? Yeah, so I highly recommend it um, if you haven't seen it yet. So Saeed was a guest artist residence at the Clay Studio in 2017. He was a finalist for the Burke Prize in 2018 at the Museum of Arts and Design. And although he now lives in North Carolina, he grew up in Fustat, a neighborhood in Cairo, Egypt, really a center for industrial pottery production. Saeed comes from generations of potters and his father was his first teacher. He literally grew up in clay. And although you can see from this work and hear these incredibly intricate practice has diverged significantly from his family's roots in industry, it maintains a very deep connection to Egyptian pottery and Islamic art. And during Jen and Ibrahim's conversation, they really discussed layers of connection. And you can see these in the work, these forms mirrored upon one another, but also these connections between past and present, personal and cultural, really embodied in these often very large scale magisterial forms. Saeed has deeply researched the language of Islamic patterns, and he's focused on these jug filters admiring especially those from the Fatimid period. And the function of these small sort of intricate tools is really simple. It's to filter out rocks and debris while drinking, but they have this secondary offering, this sort of intimate act of beauty as the user draws up um, to take a drink and enjoys this incredible patterning. And so this play of utility and ancestry that is embodied within these tools is of course really inherent to much of Islamic ceramics. So you can see how these jug filters serve as the basis for the carved geometric and foliate and calligraphic patterns that inhabit Saeed's work. And as he has said, this sort of simple circular shape really reflects the basis of all arts 
and um, very beautifully points out that this is uh, symbolic of the earth and life. Finally, we'll talk about the work of Molly Hatch, who even before she was a working mother, was keenly aware of how ceramics in the domestic context and plates in particular, can take on these dual meetings as both givers and keepers of cultural memory. So Hatch really started these incredible monumental installations. She often calls them plate paintings uh, that use historical patterning and the plate itself as a primary subject and a primary form. She began them uh, with her own cultural memory of these decorative objects that were inherited from her mother's family and her European ancestry. They were disconnected very much from her own experience growing up on a Vermont dairy farm and this tension between her own rural experience and these distant ties to inherited objects allowed her to both examine and abstract these patterns. She looked at blue and white uh, Chinese export porcelain and in this recent work which looks at 15th century Dutch still life just to give you a sense of its monumentality, it is 252 hand-painted plates. It is more than 20 feet, 23 feet across. So there are a lot of dualities in Hatch's work, and indeed uh, her practice actually has two sides. Not only is she a thriving studio artist, and on the right is a detail from repertoire, um, just one of three niches which make up a monumental installation commissioned for the Newark Museum. It was based on their textile collection, and this pattern here is translated from a jacquard woven blue and white coverlet made in Bergen County, New Jersey in the 1840s. But on the flip side, her work is also very much connected to actual domestic life, which we have all lived a lot of recently. Um, she has a design practice as well, producing ceramics for everyday life, like this vase on the right. Um, she has worked with anthropology, among other producers, creating lines of ceramics and objects for the home. There is sort of this give and take between her studio practice and her design work with her designs really putting into practice the ideas embodied in her studio work. And so for Making Place Matter, each of these artists as we develop will be bringing all sides of their own sense of place from their ancestry, from their cultural inheritance into dialogue with one another, into dialogue with the new and existing communities of the Clay Studio and into dialogue with all of our important partners. So we look forward to opening up this process and sharing more and hearing directly from the artists as it develops. So I wanna pass it then to Maria, who can tell us a little bit about her important role in this project. Well, I'm gonna start with a little bit of background. And I was born in Kansas and lived in Caracas, Venezuela until I was 18. Moved to the States to go to college and um, received my master's in fine arts at Temple University, Tyler School of Art, and my BFA from the University of South um, Florida in Tampa. Um, by day, I work for the Clay Studio, and by nights and weekends, I'm a ceramicist. I have um, the luxury of having my own studio at home, which gives me 24-hour access to my work. Um, I have been um, working for the Clay Studio since I came out of grad school in 2015. Um, because of the pandemic, you know, we all started working from home and one of the tax tasks I had was to translate uh, Claymobile um, lesson plans and hand buildings, um, instructions and developing uh, ceramic vocabulary, which I realized it was harder than I thought uh, there is not much online access to ceramics in Spanish. And um, if you guys know of any of any sites, please let me know because um, it's really difficult to find um, things that are translated and that uh, could help me. So um, with the help of Leo, a coworker at the Clay Studio and a few books that I ended up ordering on Amazon and um, I had the uh, spent many, many hours and I was able to translate a complete vocabulary in Spanish. Um, unfortunately, I did not have access to art in Venezuela. And until this past few months, my vocabulary was in English because this is where I went to college. This is where I learned about art. Um, my role in Making Place Matters is of exhibition community organizer, and I will be a liaison between the Kensington community and our five active partners. 
uh, Taller Puertorriqueño, North Square Neighborhood Partners, South Kensington Community Partners, and Old Kensington Association. Um, also because of Kensington's Hispanic population, I will also focus on making the show material bilingual. I'm excited about the show because I love the work of these three artists and also because we'll get to know and work with our neighbors. And I'm gonna go and do a little Spanish translation, just, in, it's not gonna be the whole thing, but I'm gonna do as much as I can. Um, Nací en Kansas y viví en Caracas, Venezuela, hasta los 18 años. Yo me mudé a los Estados Unidos para estudiar en la universidad y recibí mi maestría en cerámica en la, de la Universidad de Temple, en Tyler School of Art. Me recibí mi licenciatura de la Universidad de South Florida en Cerámica y de día trabajo para el Clay Studio y de noche trabajo como, una, como artista, como ceramista. Eh, estoy, estaba trabajando para el Clay Studio desde el 2015 y este, por razones de la pandemia, de la pandemia, disculpen, este es un Spanglish, he estado... Eh, uno de los trabajos que me dio el Clay Studio fue traducir eh, eh, información en español y una de las cosas que me, se fue muy, me fue muy complicado fue traducir un vocabulario en cerámica porque no hay mucho acceso de cerámica en español en, en, en el internet o en ningún lado realmente. Eh, yo ordené libros por internet, tuve una ayuda de una de, mis, de nuestras compañeras de trabajo que se llama Leo o Leonor, amo su nombre en español, y, este, y unos libros. Y bueno, desafortunadamente en Venezuela no tuve acceso a, a vocabulario en arte, realmente no tuve ningún tipo de acceso en arte, y todo mi vocabulario es en, es en Estados Unidos, porque aquí fue donde fui a la universidad y estudié. Mi, um, mi tarea en Making Place Matter, en la exhibición, es de... Uy, um, a ver, de organizadora de la exhibición con la comunidad. Y mi enlace, yo voy a hacer como enlace entre la Kensington, la comunidad de Kensington y tres, um, tres y cinco organizaciones aliadas, como Taller Puertorriqueño, North Square Neighborhood Partners, Kensington, South Kensington Community Partners, Old Kensington Association. Uh, también porque la población de Kensington es, um, es hispana o mayormente hispana, pues entonces me voy a enfocar también en traducir y hacer el material de la, de la exhibición bilingüe. Una de las cosas que yo estoy súper emocionada de trabajar para esta exhibición es porque amo el trabajo de los tres artistas que van a exhibir y también porque vamos a poder trabajar con nuestros vecinos. And that's me. <laughs> So I, I think that after me comes Ana. Sí, gracias. Gracias, María. Hola, mi nombre es Ana Gabriela Jiménez. Eh, yo me entrené como arquitecta y recibí una maestría en Media Design en el Park Institute in the Netherlands, Holanda. Y estoy encantada de unir el Clay Studio um, como, como staff para ser eh, la coordinadora de esta exhibición. Eh, aquí, I'm going to jump to English. Uh, here are some of the, I, I was trained as an architect and I received a master's degree in media design from a uh, university in the Netherlands, the Peace Park Institute. Um, I want to bring my skills knowledge of exhibition field and museums to handle the logistics. Uh, an exhibition brings a lot of work regarding log logistics. Um, and my deep, deep interest in material culture to serve this exhibition, making place, place matter. So here I am um, on the right uh, side, you can see me working uh, in, with the layout of a, of, a, of a showcase in the Gold Museum where I worked for in Colombia. And on the left, you see my, uh, an example of my own humble ceramics practice. Um, I recently moved to Philly. And can you move to the next mm. image, please? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I recently moved to Philly, to Philadelphia. So far, I like this city a lot. But I'm most familiar with West Philadelphia, the, the area of West Philadelphia. So. Um, 
really exploring and getting in contact with um, the community in Kensington neighborhood is something that interests me a lot from, from being part of this project. As I told you, and you have noticed, um, um, I'm Latin myself. I was born in Colombia. That's where I had mainly developed my career. I'm aware that around 40% of the population in the, in the neighborhood is, is, is uh, from a Hispanic background. So um, that, that's very, um, it, I'm, I'm going to go close to my community in a way. Um, or oh, I coordinate well. Here you are looking at an image of uh, a design image, a render for the planetarium in Bogota. Uh, I have coordinated tasks and projects for the renovation of well-known Colombian museums, the Gold Museum, as I told you before. This uh, was a science museum. Um, I've worked with cultural organizations uh, for the. It's going to be already like 12 years. I had the luck in all of them, in all of those works, to team up with amazing people. And so far I found that the, the, the team we're building together uh, for making place matter, matter is as amazing. And I had, uh, as I told you, um, worked in science, archaeological, historical, memory museums, and I used to wear many different hats. Um, he, this is another image of the of the planetarium in Bogota. It was a uh, sixties. It was a building from the sixties, so it has to be renovated as well. And we, um, well, the, the the museum I was working for, a science museum, was in charge of building the exhibition, um, and as well renovating the building. These are images from room thirteen. That was one of my last uh, work in, in Colombia. It's called uh, Land as Resource, where my work was mainly focused in, on the coordination of different tasks, such as museography design, development of audiovisual. I'm a very fond of audiovisuals. I enjoy, I enjoy a lot working and scripting and getting together with the, with the, with the magicians that really create uh, moving images uh, behind the scenes. Um, and I, I also worked uh, coordinating the interactive design for this room, and uh, graphic pieces, and the uh, exhibition setup itself. Uh, I think I don't have any more images, Jen. Yeah, so uh, just a brief um, summary of what I've said in Spanish is that Estoy muy feliz de hacer parte de este proyecto. Estos son museos en Colombia en los que he trabajado, museo de, de historia, museo de, de ciencia, eh, museos arqueológicos. Eh, y nada, quiero prestar mis, mis conocimientos, mis habilidades y como esta, esta transversalidad en, en, en roles que, que he podido cultivar, um, pues ponerlo al servicio de la comunidad y de esta exposición. Y ahora creo que es tu turno de nuevo, Jen. Jen, you're back. <laughs> ah, I'm on mute. I see you didn't hear me saying gracias. Um, I was trying to speak Spanish, but I was on mute. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, I will go back to um, just a few images of the new building or the renderings of the new building which has been designed by digsa architects they've been a great partner in working together with our executive director jennifer martin um, our coo josie bachelman our building and business committee of our board i know they have had many many meetings to talk about really how to best build this building so that it will serve our community and so that it will serve um you know the the art uh, to the, the best that it can. And we are so lucky that we have the chance to build a purpose-built space. Um, we think it's the first such purpose-built building in the United States that's dedicated to a ceramic arts institution like ours. And we do serve, as Roberto Lugo said in the video, we serve artists from the time that they touch clay as children to the time that they are the highest level of professional artists and everyone in between. Um, we'll see if the studio spaces 
um, are ever this empty. Usually there's lots of people in them. Um, I will also note just for information, we are reopening our current building. And I say that, that made me think of it because the studios will be this empty. We are being very careful with social distancing. If you are interested in taking classes again or using the studio spaces, please um, read our information that Raymond Vork, our graphic designer, has so carefully put on our website to make sure that um, you understand all the safety precautions that we're taking in this time. This is our soon to be roof deck that we're all very excited about having lunch up here. So when the building is done, please come up to the fourth floor if you're around and um, we're gonna be having picnics all together many times. <laughs> um, and then here again is um, what is happening today. If you're ever walking by and you wanna snap a picture, go ahead and, and send it to us. We get very excited when we see these things. So back to, um, oh, Marilyn says that she knows a place for Maria for the um, research into Spanish ceramic terms. That's great, thank you, Marilyn. And then uh, Raymond just placed those protocols for re reopening right into the chat for anyone who wants to take advantage of them. Go back to my, my other screen. So again, um, our goal is to present an art exhibition that inspires transformative personal experiences for all of our audiences through the vision of the artists, Kukuli Velarde, Molly Hatch, and Ibrahim Said, who each substantiate the importance of place to explore identity. The exhibition, Making Place Matter, will empower visitors to use their creativity to examine their own connections to place and identity as they also form a deeper connection to the clay studio in its new home. This meaningful exhibition will provoke discussion, inspire art making through responsive activities for audiences, and therefore will promote a sense of agency over the gallery space for visitors. And what I mean, what we mean when we say that is that we really want the um, each person who comes in and all of our neighbors to feel that the clay studio is their place. When I say agency, I mean it means that they have authorship. They know they are welcome, there's no charge, they can come in anytime and look at art um, and hopefully oftentimes be able to engage in art making themselves. So we, we have an open door policy and we are excited to be really one of the only places in Philadelphia where you can walk in and see extremely wonderful high quality art for free every day. That's really important to us. So just to elaborate a little bit more on the the structure. We are in general for the clay studio creating a community advisory committee that's going to be comprised of neighbors in South Kensington, those community partners we talked about, as well as our current constituencies, our resident artists, our students who use our building now, um, those people who have been with us for the last 46 years. That's about the general clay studio and all of our, our machinations. We, from that, there's going to be a subcommittee that's called the Exhibition Council. The Exhibition Council is that group that we're going to work with directly for Making Place Matter. It's going to be about 15 to 20 people. Um, and again, those various communities are going to be represented, represented to um, really to form one unified community as we go forward. The Exhibition Council will work together with our staff members, our educators, we have Tiny WPA that's going to be helping us as well. I'm sorry, I didn't put their uh, picture of them up on our PowerPoint. They are a wonderful organization that works directly with communities to design furniture, sometimes public furniture, sometimes for us, for instance, will be the exhibition furniture. And we're actually going to get a chance to build it together with them. So the idea is all to engage and feel like we're all part of the process and that we all have ownership. In the future, we will continue the visitor engagement gallery whenever possible when we have exhibitions. It will look different in different situations perhaps, but the idea of always providing something um, hands-on for visitors to do in response to the exhibition is really important to us. And that exhibition council is also going to continue for every exhibition. So this is not something that we just want to come in this one time and say, make a big splash and have this be the first exhibition. This is a new paradigm for the clay studio and how we um, present our exhibitions. So we're so excited. I'm so pleased that we have such an amazing team of 
staff partners and our community partners and our artists. And I'm just so excited that so many people came on today to listen to us and hear more about it. Does anyone, I'm just going to open it up if you want to take yourself off mute, if my colleagues have any more comments, if any community partners want to mention anything, or if anyone has any questions, please do so. Or just say that you're really excited that we're, <laughs> we're building our building. I'm excited. Well, um, I, I do want to, to stress and highlight this last thing that you mentioned, Jennifer, that is amazing that we're going to get able to work uh, really close with the community and we're going to give a face and a voice to to whomever wants to work with with clay and wants to like reflect on their own about the, the, the work like the professional work that is presented to our 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 home there so that I, I would really like to highlight that and I have a question about the um the Community Advisory Board and the Exposition um, Council. I mean, how will the neighbors be um, informed of this? How do they join? I mean, is there is it online that you join or do you have flyers going to go out or how are we going to get the other community members involved and know that they can apply for the board or apply for the exhibit camp, you know, exposition, excuse me, council? That's an excellent question. And um, the answer is many fold. Well, one of the answers is over the next few months, we are going to be just as you're saying, it'll be online, but it's really more about um, going out into the community. Uh, Maria is going to be a big help with this. Annie, Miss Moss, you're going to be a big help. <laughs> We're going to ask mm -hmm. the community partners to really receive this information and disseminate it to your constituents at the same time that we are also doing that important work by going to any, I mean, in normal circumstances, we would be going to every community festival. We don't have that luxury this summer, right. so we have to be creative and figure out new ways. So any newsletter that goes out, any, we're gonna post signs on telephone poles. We are gonna um, really spend, so the first three months of the project really is just about getting the word out and asking people to be involved. So yeah. that, that's a really important question. I'm sorry I didn't mention that because, um, you know, you can't just open the door and expect a bunch of people to walk in. The really <laughs> hard part is getting them to come. And that also includes everyone on this exhibition council is gonna be um, receiving an honorarium for their time. They're gonna have food provided and childcare provided at any meetings that we have. We feel very strongly that the time of the community members needs to be compensated and honored in that way. And Marilyn um, worked with us. I know she attended some clan conversations as well as some other people on the call today. And hopefully re remember that we were really also lucky because we were able to engage local neighborhood um, restaurants and other places. Sometimes um, people making things out of their kitchens would provide um, wonderful food for these meetings. Um, anyway, so we managed to also, or we're dedicated to um, engaging many different layers of the community through this and, and to support the other businesses that are already there as well. So thank you, Ms. Moss, that was a really good question. Of course, it means that we're gonna, we're asking you to help us, I guess. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments about that or other aspects? I know Raymond was just, um, Raymond, I don't have that floor plan in front of me, but Raymond was asking about uh, maybe walking people through the first floor. I guess I have the, um, I can show you the image of the. Um, Jennifer, I just uploaded it for you. <laughs> oh, uploaded it where? Onto the share? Chat, into oh. the chat. Okay, hold on. Oh, there it is. Okay. Aha. Now I just have to share that. Hold on, everybody. Thank you, Raymond. <clears throat> okay. So if you're curious about what the space is going to look like, at least on the first floor, when you walk in, um, if you can see the vestibule down at the bottom here, 
you walk in and the reception area here, people will be able to orient you for wherever you choose to go next. You can be um, look around in the shop. You can walk through to the gallery space where the th work by those three artists will be. You can walk right out from the gallery into the sculpture garden. Um, you can also walk back if you're coming in to go to class. You'll go over here to the elevator, take where the stairs to take that up. And then when you also when you first walk in right in front of you is going to be the demo studio and for this exhibition that is going to be where the visitor engagement gallery is. So after you go walk through the space in the gallery, um, you'll be able to come back out here and spend some time in the demonstration studio. Each one of the three artists is also going to spend a couple of weeks doing an on site residency. So sometimes one of those three artists will be here and you can interact with them directly. Um, talk to them about their work and and literally make art with them. The other really exciting thing about the first floor is this outdoor events pavilion. So when we are able to gather again in large groups, we're going to be having um, our annual clay fest will be there. Our other kinds of um, public activities will be in that outdoor space. So the whole front of the building is mostly windows and it is meant to welcome you, to show you what's going on inside um, and to get people excited. And again, open door policy, there's no charge any time to come in and look at the art. Thanks, Raymond. Anybody? Have a chat question. Lisa Frank said she was fortunate to have a visiting artist in her kindergarten classroom. Will schools be able to take a trip to the new building? Yes, absolutely, for sure. To speed the exhibition, we'll give you your class a guided tour um, and to do other things and we'll connect you to the education department. And of course our Claymobile takes um, clay classes out into the community, but you're also welcome to come with us. What is the footage of the gallery space? 1500 square feet. So it's about, it's, it's a little bit bigger than our current space, but it is um, a much, better designed space. So it will have some movable walls inside and will um, really give us the most clear space and the most flexible space with those movable walls. Are you gonna have a parking lot? So that event space is, it doubles as a parking lot when we don't have an event going on. It's not very big. So we don't have a big space, but we have, um, we have heard from Alexa that sometimes we might be able to use their parking lot when we have bigger events. Um, so we know we can do some um, partnerships to help with that because I know that can be an issue, especially now with all the construction. Blah. Yeah, I want to actually share something about that. I don't know if you guys are all invited to any of the zone meetings, but I was wondering, I was one in two weeks ago about American Street. And apparently we're getting some new buildings and they're supposed to be low housing, but Based on the rent they share, I don't consider that low housing. Mm. I hear there's a mall coming. I hear there's a Starbucks coming. Oh. Which is actually scaring people. Yeah. So I'm just letting you know, get to know your neighbors, maybe come to some of our zone meetings because there is a big push about all this stuff happening. But I'm okay. I know that you, they're okay with the place studio coming in because that's something new and that's something that you guys actually did really well inviting the community when you started this whole process. Yes. And I, yes. give, I give you a blessing on that because that is so important for this community. Well, thank and the you. fact that you involve a lot of members and, you know, financially you helped out when you could and you actually, you know, you opened the doors for the community. Yeah. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. So I really want to thank you for that. Thank you. Yes. I can say that. I work at the end, but I also live in the community. I've been around here for more than 40 years. So I see the growth up and down, and I like the gentrification, but when you push somebody aside, I'm sorry, you, you shouldn't be doing it. I'm about uh, making our neighborhood look better and make it grow, but include your neighbors in the process. Thank you. Yes, we, I mean, we know that we're part of that gentrification, but we want to be the, a positive force within it. And we, we I'm, I'm so pleased to hear that you think we're doing a good job. Um, I know that we have, um, had representatives at those zoning meetings in the past and that's definitely something that we should um, make sure continues and yeah it's there's a there is a lot of work to do around 
fair um, practices within all these changes that are happening. And we do, we, you know, we want to advocate when we can. So if we can be part of that conversation, absolutely, please reach out to us and we'll, um, but putting that on the calendar um, is definitely something that is important. Jennifer Martin um, says that she will um, be attending the meetings. And is it the South Kensington zoning meeting that you went to, Marilyn? Or which one was it? I actually came in kind of late. Somebody sent me something at the last minute. Um, it happened on about two weeks ago. The next one, I believe, is July 8th. And it, it was the city showing their plans. Was it a, a, Zoom, a Zoom? It was a Zooming, a zoning meeting, yes. But I mean, it wasn't it was a person. Zoom? It oh, it was, yeah, it was Zoom. It was Zoom. They're doing yeah, a lot. Of okay. So if I get a link, okay. I'll share with you guys, and then you can pass it on. Okay. Oh, I'm going to put my email into the chat. So anyone who has questions or anything, um, and Marilyn, I think you might have my email, but just in case. I do. Okay. There we go. For anyone else who wants it. Jennifer Martin is our executive director, and I know that she has attended many of those meetings in the past. She's waving. Hi, Jen. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's a really good question also. Does anyone else have questions or comments? We did, um, I just, I do wanna say that although we have two of our amazing artists with us today, we will have very specific programming um, mm -hmm. where they are highlighted and um, just this very short mention, although Elizabeth, as usual, is extremely eloquent and thank you so much for your your beautiful introduction to their work, but we will be hearing directly from the artist as well. Absolutely. As we move on. I'm bad at waiting long enough for people to talk, so I'm just gonna be quiet for like 10 seconds. Well, uh, I, I, I feel pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kukuli. I'm no. trying to let you off the hook and say in the future you will come. I, I yeah. I'm not prepared to say much, but I live in Kensington for 15 years. And uh, I, we love this neighborhood. We are concerned about the gentrification that is beginning. Uh, we are glad that the Clay Studio is being so conscious coming here and trying to, to have a different approach than so many others that just expect people to live. This is a neighborhood I, where a lot of, the, of our neighbors make uh, $10,000, $11,000 a year. Um, they don't use computers. Many have telephones, of course. Yeah. I think that sending, sending flyers, putting flyers, taking flyers, to every household, it would be the most effective. Mm -hmm. uh, com internet is is not is not mm -hmm. an option, and um, I think that that going to the schools, uh, talking to the teachers and to the principals uh, here also would could make a difference in terms of mm -hmm. children having a place where they can. Uh, have the opportunity to work with uh, such an amazing material that that clay is. Um, I'm very honored that you guys uh, have chosen me among my uh, the other two artists uh, whose work I just got to know in the last months, and and I'm very honored to be part of this exhibition with them. And I look forward to all uh, that the Clay Studio can do and mean in this neighborhood. And, uh, and you know, hope that things will continue going in that direction because what is something that we need is consistency. Not in a year, not in a decade, but a way of changing minds and becoming something better in terms of being capable of sharing that stage of life with other cultural backgrounds. That's all. <laughs> I'll talk more next time about my work because I love talking about my work. I'm very uh, egocentric, so that won't be a problem. <laughs> well, I was gonna, um, yeah, I'm gonna be asking Kukuli, but maybe later in July or August, we'll have something on the calendar. We'll see what the dates are, but thank you. Um, I'm excited about that. Um, Thank you. That is really important. And, and I, 
I think um, if there aren't any more questions, I guess the last thing that I want to say is, although we we feel that we are leading with the desire to make the best of our relationship with the neighbors. We also are very aware that we don't know all the answers and we want to listen. And we are coming with open hearts and open ears because we know that we don't know all the answers and we don't know the best always way to do things. So we are excited to, to listen and to work together truly so that we can all grow together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm gonna um, sign off, but I'll just, I like to wait. So I'm gonna sit here and feel free to wave and say goodbye and, and have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week. <laughs>